All right, we're on. All right, week three of the NFL is done, and I gotta say, it was crazy. So before I get into it, I'm just gonna say a few things here. First of all, I'm gonna try and do this a little bit differently here. I'm gonna just like get straight to the three-word game. I'll go over some stats that I think was was important, and, and I'm gonna try and keep the times down as as possible because I'm gonna be running like 25 minute times like I did the last video, or half hour like I did the first video. And anyway, let's get into it. I'll go over the scores, the three-word game, and the breakout chances that was over at entering week three. So let's start with the Thursday night game. The Dolphins at the Jaguars. Dolphins won 40-23. And my three words, ugly times three. Because it was raining the whole day. It was raining the whole game. It didn't stop raining until I think the Dolphins finally left TIA Bank Stadium. Breeze threw three interceptions for the Dolphins. He drops and had three touchdowns. And I can't. And then Fitzpatrick threw 334 yards, threw a pick. It should have been a pick six from Jalen Johnson. 97 yards. 97 yard pick six from Jalen Johnson. And he also forced a fumble. Fumble. But speaking of three interceptions, Jacksonville, who had those? Let's see. Oh, I didn't get down who had all three interceptions on there, but the one that was most important was Jonathan Jones. A 72-yard pick six. Anyway, uh, James White had 113 yards rushing and a touchdown for the Jaguars. Boykin cut the touchdown pass from Breeze. Defensively, it's the Darius Smith went off. Four and a half sacks, forced fumble. That led him to winning AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Well, let's see here. Uh, on the Dolphins' side, Romeo Quara, he needed to hold the Jags to less than hard yards rushing. He failed that one. Or get one plus one or more interceptions for Sumbles, tackles for lost sacks. He only had one tackle for loss, so they say he failed his mission. So he doesn't get a chance to upgrade until he does something better, then he'll get another chance. But <laughs> the best pass that game didn't come from Drew Brees, didn't come from Fitzpatrick. You know who it came from? Brian Anger on the on the on the Dolphins! There's a 33-yard completion pass to corner Michael O.J. Mudia. That's how ugly it was. Anyway, let's move on to the Sunday afternoon games. First up was the 49ers at Giants, and the Niners won 31-24, enter the Mixon Bowl. As in, Joe Mixon, 96 yards rushing and two touchdowns. J.K. Dobbins had a rushing touchdown of his own. Jerry Judy caught a touchdown pass from Teddy Bridgewater. And Jesse James failed on his mission, which was two touchdowns or 100 plus yards, 100 yards plus. He only had 52 yards. And Trey, defensive end Trey Henderson picked off Matt Ryan. That is sad. Speaking of Matt Ryan on the Giants, three touchdown passes and a pick. Two to Corlin Sutton, one from Phil Dorsett. Joey Bosa had three sacks. Tavon Young had an interception. Move on to the Texans at the Steelers. Steelers dominate the Texans 41 to 14. And I say new steel blockade because the way the defense played for the Steelers was just phenomenal. I mean, Matt Milano, three sacks. Brian Burns, two sacks. One half sacks for Jadavion Clowney. Half a sack for Tyron Matthew. The other two sack another last sack? Doug Costin. I don't even know who he is. He's pretty popular, I guess. C.J. Henderson had a forced fumble fumble recovery. Fred Warner had two picks. And that's just Pittsburgh's defense. Offensively, Minshew had a good game. 261 yards passing, three touchdowns. Rushing touchdowns for Gus Edwards and Brandon Bolden. Touchdowns for Evan Ingram, Brandon Ayuk, and T. Higgins. All right, on the Texans' side, Garoppolo had two touchdown passes and those two picks. Barkley had 94 total yards and the receiving touchdown, and also a touchdown catch for DJ Moore. Moore, so Texans finally go down, and we are going to go from one side of Pennsylvania to the next. Bengals at the Eagles, and the Bengals get the 10-point win, 27-17, earning their stripes. 
You look back to 2019, the Bengals were just ugh, awful. But the way this fantasy draft happened, it's like they are going to be good. Matt Stafford, two touchdown passes and those and a couple picks. One touchdown pass to David Montgomery, who also ran for another touchdown. And then Golden Tate had a touchdown catch, along with those 118 yards receiving. Who, if I was going to have a good game, David Moore, he only had 33 yards receiving, and he failed his breakout opportunity chance. DeMarcus Lawrence had two sacks, and Xavier Woods had an interception off of Philly quarterback Kyler Murray, who only had 182 yards passing. Had one pick, but he also threw a touchdown to Nick Boyle, and their touchdown came from J.D. McKissick, who had those picks, though, was Sean Murphy Bunting and Bashad Breland. All right, moving on to the next one, the Raiders at the Patriots. And the Raiders go to Foxborough and pick up a big win, 31-14, the nasty autumn win. Like if you go back and hear the hear like the classic soundtracks of NFL like like the autumn wind rising or something like that, well this was a nasty autumn wind that the Las Vegas Raiders blew through Foxborough. Marcus Davenport had three sacks, DJ Hayden had a pick off of Ryan Tannehill, and offensively Josh Allen had a pedestrian game, two hundred eighty five yards passing, a touchdown two picks, a touchdown to Marquise Hollywood Brown. Josh Adams ran for a touchdown and two touchdowns for Philip Lindsay on 69 nice rushing yards. Meanwhile, for those New England Patriots, Tannehill had two touchdowns and a pick, 183, 183 yards passing. Jamison Crowder caught a touchdown, and the other touchdown went to right tackle Bobby Hart. Big man touchdown. We love to see the big man get a touchdown. Brian Poole and Devin Bush each had a pick. Now, this is where things get interesting here. Terrell Evans had a forced fumble. Maybe he had a tackle for a loss. I might have missed putting it on there. But what was the other thing? See for Okay, a Terrell Evans. Less than 200 yards passing or one or more interceptions. He didn't get that. Tackle for a loss. He, he think, might have had one. Must have missed it. Forced fumble or a sack. He didn't have the sack. But for some reason, they say... He passed, so Terrell Evans on the Patriots now has star development. So congratulations to him. Moving on, Titans at the Vikings. The Vikings win 17 to nothing. Not since Denver. Remember back in 2019 when the Titans went to the Denver Broncos and were shut out? I think it got like so bad that after halftime... Coach Vrabel put in Ryan Tannehill and never looked back. Well, they were shut out then. They got shut out here. Jared, starting with the Vikings, Jared Goff had 249 yards passing, a touchdown to Brandon Cooks. Tevin Coleman also ran for a touchdown. Jannard Avery had two sacks on. Titans quarterback rookie Tua Tagovailoa, who only had 74 yards passing. 74 yards passing! Le'Veon Bell had 43 yards rushing. And you think maybe something could have happened with maybe Kendrick Bourne? Nope. Only had one catch for six yards. That's it. Mission failed. Move on. Washington football team at the Browns, and the Browns win 20 to 20, and Carr was rocking. That's my three words. Carr was rocking. Derek Carr threw four touchdown passes. One to Naeem Hines, two to Eric Ebron, and the other two to Kenny Galladay. D4 and Aaron Donald each had two sacks on Cam Newton, and LJ Fort had an interception for that football team. Cam Newton, two touchdowns and a pick, 323 yards passing. Marvin Jones and Tyler Boyd each had a touchdown catch. Gary Conley had eight tackles. He didn't get any of these other objectives, so mission failed. Rams of the Bills game. The game on lock. Bills, 26. Rams, 24. The Gray Shell Tour finally gets pulled down because Deshaun Watson went 16 for 37. 217 yards and a touchdown pass to Robbie Anderson. Nick Chubb ran for two touchdowns, and Bradley Chubb had two sacks on Buffalo quarterback Drew Locke, who threw three, for three touchdowns. Two to Jacob Holster, one to backup running back Damian Harris. Sidney Jones had only six tackles. 
Nothing else spectacular, but the mission failed. All right. The Bears at the Falcons. Bears win 49-35. to What did I say on there? I said, past enough cooking. I should say enough cooking past, because the whole monster let Russ cook. There was enough of that there. And at this high-scoring shootout in hot Atlanta. 300 passing yards, three touchdowns, and a pick from Russell Wilson, who also ran for a touchdown. Two rushing touchdowns for Devin Singletary. Touchdown passes to Willie Sneed, the fourth, Keenan Allen, and Zach Paschal. While Chauncey Garner-Johnson and Kenneth Murray Jr. each had interceptions off of Atlanta quarterback Dak Prescott. And before I get to Dak Prescott, one note here. Russell Wilson, with that performance, won NFC Offensive Player of the Week. All right, Atlanta, Dak Prescott, 296 yards passing, four touchdowns, two picks, rushing touchdown for Josh Jacobs, touchdown passes to Josh Reynolds, Devontae Parker, and two touchdowns for David Njoku, and it was Darius Williams who picked off Russell Wilson. Now, there's an odd scenario here for Kyle Phillips in the game his second-year defensive end out of Tennessee. He had to hold the Bears to less than 100 yards rushing, or get one or more of the, of course, interceptions, forced fumbles, sacks, or tackles for loss. He had one tackle for a loss, and the Bears didn't get 100 yards rushing. I think because of that, they say, Kyle Phillips, you passed the mission. You now have star development. So congrats to him. Moving on. Panthers at Chargers. Panthers get the close win, 22-20. Santos seizes moment. Kirk Cousins tried to touch on pass to Cole Beasley. Four and a half sacks from Maurice Hurst, two sacks from Elvin Ingram, one from Shaquille Barrett, and Jordan Lewis picked off Aaron Rodgers, but Santos went five for five on field goals. Rodgers threw a touchdown pass to Gerald Everett, and Zeke ran for a touchdown, but it was not enough to overcome the Panthers, who are now two and one. All right, next game, the Jets of the Colts. Spreading the wealth is my three-word game, as the Colts win 40-34 to in overtime. This was a crazy game. I didn't watch the whole game. I only saw, like, the last bits of it. But Phillip Rivers, four touchdown passes. Two of them to Ryan Griffin on his only two catches. And then, identically, TJ Hawkinson and Larry Fitzgerald both had six catches, both had 70 yards, and both had a touchdown. Chris Carson ran for a touchdown. Let's see, Michael Pierce had two sacks, and Desmond Trufant had a pick. For the Colts, it's Joe Burrow leading the way, 413 yards passing, three touchdowns and a pick. He also ran for a touchdown. He won AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Latavius Murray ran for a touchdown. Darnell Mooney had 107 yards receiving. Devin Duvernay caught a touchdown. DK Metcalf caught a touchdown. Noah Fant caught a touchdown. That was actually the game winner in overtime. I forgot, this game went to overtime. Three sacks for Chandler Jones, a pick from William Jackson. And, oh, yes, I forgot. At the very end, the Colts were in position, in regulation, could have won the game. But, no, they let the clock run down, let it hit zero before kick, they had a chance to kick the game winning field goal. They were in range. It would have been like, I think I remember like a really, it was like a close, like a 34-yard field goal attempt to try to win the game. But they didn't do that. So, instead, Colts got the ball first. They go down the field in the field. In the field. It's 4-3 to three from the 8-yard line. So, so they're going to set up for, like, you know, get a chip shot field goal, and then the Jets have a chance to go down and try and win the game, right? Wrong. They take the snap, flip it to kicker Zane Gonzalez, who I he was going to throw the ball, but he didn't throw the ball. He just kept it, ran with it, took a big hit, but he got 6 yards. And then the next play was that Joe Burrow touchdown pass to Noah Fan to win the game. All right, Lions at Cardinals. Lions 37, Cardinals 29, 3 and do. That's right, Lions are 3 and to start the year. 378 yards, touchdown, and a pick for Foles. First pick this year for Nick Foles. And that came from Cardinal corner Rasul Douglas. Kareem Hunt, 121, Kareem Hunt, 121 yards rushing and a touchdown. Zachers had 63 yards and a touchdown and a catch from does a catch from Nick Foles. Josh Allen had two sacks, four stumbles from Byron Murphy and Jamal Adams. Jonathan 
Jonathan Cyprian recovered one of the stumbles and took it back for a touchdown. Detroit just dominated that game. Lamar Jackson had two touchdowns and no picks. Zero and forty-one yards. All right. Raheem Mostert ran for a touchdown. Jalen Rager caught his first touchdown pass of his career. And also catching their touchdown was Hunter Renfro. All right. This is also part of the Larry games here. Cowboys at Seahawks. Seahawks get their first win, 25-20 over the Dallas Cowboys. And I say it's Drake's football hits. Bear with me here. I'm going to get to it in just a second. For the Cowboys, Brady only had 188 yards passing. A touchdown, no picks. Danny Williams had a rushing touchdown. Touchdown pass to Stephon Diggs. Seamus had a clean game, 252 yards passing. A touchdown, no picks. King and Drake ran for 86 yards and the rushing touchdown, so he found that end zone bling and that hotline end zone bling. And then the touchdown pass to Kiki, do you love me, cutie, on his only catch, 11 yard touchdown. So, so bear with me there on that one. All right, Buccaneers at the Broncos was the next game, and the Broncos edged out 23 to 21. Fumble changed the game. I'll get to that in just a second. To start things off. Buccaneers, Justin Herbert, 392 passing yards, a touchdown, and two picks. He also ran for the other two touchdowns. Calvin really led the way, rushing for with 45 yards. Calvin really had 108 yards. He didn't have the touchdown, though. Who had the touchdown? I don't like doing this song, but my friend Franchise Gaming loves it, so here we go. DJ Chark do 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 DJ Chark do 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 DJ Chark do 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 DJ Chark DJ Chark 53 yards and a touchdown the force Buckner three sacks and that force fumble like I said we'll get back to that shortly but Ocean Zimines had a chance to break out he only had a tackle for a loss nothing else so he failed his mission for Denver Colin Kaepernick a touchdown pass to Allen Robinson other than that it was just field goals. Uh, Gurley had 88 yards rushing. DeAndre Hopkins, 83 yards receiving. William Golson sacked Herbert three times. And those two picks came from Anthony Brown and Jeff Okuda. Here's where I'm going to say where the fumble changed everything. A little backstory, though. How I run things here is, like, I'll go through every game. And I'll, like, like fast sim through the stuff. But, like, if things are close... There's like a chance to probably take the lead or something like that. I will hop in and I will watch the rest of that game. And this is what happened. The Bucks were up by one point. Broncos had the ball at their own two-yard line. Colin Kaepernick comes out of the shotgun. But here comes the Forrest Buckner. Sacks him. Forces the fumble. Some guys right there couldn't get it. Who got it though? Left guard David Andrews. Andrews picks up the ball. He's running in the end zone. They couldn't catch him until he's brought down at the five-yard line. If he does recover that fumble and get to the five-yard line, then later, Kaepernick doesn't connect with DeAndre Hopkins for a clutch game to get them into Broncos territory. Broncos territory, but I mean Buccaneer territory. You know what I meant. If he doesn't recover that, then it doesn't happen to get the game winning field goal out of, I believe they have Eddie Pinheiro. Anyway, Sunday Night Football, Packers at the Saints. Big Bayou blowout, as in Packers 41, Saints 16. Patrick Mahomes, four touchdown passes and no picks. Austin Eckler, 83 yards rushing and a touchdown. Touchdowns to Adam Troutman, Christian Kirk, Julio Jones, Hayden Hurst. Charverius Ward had seven tackles and two interceptions. That won him NFC Defensive Player of the Week. Steven Nelson had the other pick. And Nick Wikowski had a forced fumble and fumble recovery. For the Saints, it's Daniel Jones, 284 yards passing, a touchdown, and those three picks. Aaron Jones had a chance to go from superstar to superstar X-Factor. What he needed, though, was 200 yards total offense. He only had a hard and six, 57 yards rushing, 49 receiving. He didn't even score a touchdown. The only touchdown came from Devin Funches. It was just a disaster there in the Bayou, so Saints fall for the first time. And then Monday Night Football, it's the Chiefs at the Ravens. Chiefs win 27 to 20. And my three words, Jekyll and Hyde. I'm 
Okay, the first week was bad for Baker Mayfield. Last week, yeah, he throws for four touchdowns, but he throws five interceptions. This week, three touchdowns, no picks. I can't decide if he's going to be good or not. But yeah, 390 yards, three touchdowns, no picks for Baker Mayfield to go to Darren Waller, CeeDee Lamb, and Jakeem Grant. On the Ravens' side, Ben Roethlisberger, 296 yards passing, and a touchdown to A.J. Green. Royce Freeman ran for the other touchdown, and Miles Garrett had two and a half sacks. But anyway, that's it for week three, those breakout chances. In week four, there's only three breakout chances here. I'm going to talk about it right now. On Miami's side, Zazaria Smith, next opponent, less than 150 total yards or three, three more interceptions for some of for lost sacks. And then Pittsburgh, they have two breakout opportunities. One is Fred Warren has to do the same things as Darius Smith's doing. And the other one is T. Higgins, two touchdowns or 100 yards, rushing, receiving. But anyway, guys, that is it for week three. I will see you when week four is done. So then, actually, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm already done with week eight. I haven't even got a chance to, to make these videos for you, but I will get on these videos and I will upload them so that way I'll catch up. And we'll try and get through maybe, if I really push hard through this, maybe we can get through a season or two, maybe, maybe a second season before Madden 22 comes out. But here's hoping. Thank you guys for watching. Give it a like, comment, share, subscribe. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time with the week four results and what happens with those breakout chances. Who knows? Take care. But goodbye. Goodbye.